Welcome everybody to Comedy on Tap. I'm your host Mark Bonto and uh, this week we've got another hilarious comedian. I say hilarious, I, I just actually just <laughs> met him a little while ago but uh, he's a funny guy talking to him so we'll see how he does. Um, anyway, uh, our uh, guest this week, Tim Locke. How'd I do? Good. 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 Welcome yes. to the show, Comedy on Tap. Thank you. You know, my, my, my venues, the six venues I have in the air, they're called The Funny Spot, but this is the Comedy on Tap. This is the TV show. This is this is where you can talk all about Tim Lock. Have you ever done this before? Ah, uh, no, I haven't. Ooh. First time. And you're so, from you're from Muskegon, you said? Muskegon, yes. Uh -huh. yes. I live in Montague, which is north of Muskegon, just kind of one of those little towns where, like, the quarterback from the high school team that went to the championship is, like, right. the local hero type of place. <laughs> right, right. So, but I do a lot of a lot of stuff in Muskegon. As far as your comedy goes, that's yeah, it's where it started. I mean, we have two nightclubs in Muskegon that that do it. But mm -hmm. I mean, when people ask me where are you from, I always tend to say Muskegon, just because you know, it's it's by there. That's where I was born, raised, right. where I do my material. Right, so. right. And so, I, actually, I'll, I'll, I should get to this later, but I'll get this now. You do most of your comedy. In that area, or do you? Uh, I've I actually this weekend um, I traveled up to Traverse City from Muskegon, and then back from Traverse City to Muskegon, and then from Muskegon to Flint, and now back to Muskegon tonight to host a show. Wow! So, wow! You're busy. Ten coming. hours. Ten hours of on the road stuff. <laughs> yeah. My my ass is gonna hurt so bad. <laughs> come Sunday. <laughs> you you said you've only been doing this for like eight months. Eight months. Right. Yes. Right. And you and you're, you're sounds like you're hitting it pretty heavy. Ah, uh, I like to think I'm doing good at it. Yeah. Well, you know, I can't. I have to bring this up right off the bat because when I first met you out there, I thought you were much younger because you've only been doing eight months. You look very young. How, how old are you? This is the point where I look at the camera. <laughs> I'm 35. That's crazy. Yes, That's I get that crazy. a lot. I, I uh, a friend of mine, her kid, one time, um, she goes, "How old do you think Tim is?" And uh, her kid goes. Uh, 25, and I'm like, you're the, my most favorite kid I've ever <laughs> Well, you do. You look a lot younger than 35. Yeah. So, and, and then you told me you were doing eight months. I figured, well, this kid just got out of high school, but... Uh, no, no. So, you've been around the block. You know what's up, Tim. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know too much about life at this point. <laughs> like. you, do you work? you have a regular job? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. I'm a machinist at a little company in Muskegon. Uh -huh. So, I love doing machining work. And and, and what exactly is machining? Do, um, is, there, is there comedy in machining? Oh, a lot of times. Times, yeah. If I mess something up, I have to throw some comedy out there to soften the blow on <laughs> stuff that I've screwed up. <laughs> do, you, do you add that into your, your routine? I do. All? I do have some bits where I kind of talk about it. I started the job uh, about two months ago, and it was right on the road from a strip club. <laughs> And so I had this bit where I would talk about, um, you know, walking down because they served uh, lunch at the strip club mm -hmm. and how all of last week, uh, every burger that I had was seasoned with glitter for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you, you have to, I, I feel I have to twine, you know, my, my life into whatever I say. Well, sure, sure. Well, and again, I've never, you've never done any of my venues before in my shows. Um, so we'll I really, change that. We'll change that. We'll I'd love that. to have you down. Awesome. I, and it's awesome. and it's great. I appreciate you coming here. But you, so your type of comedy again. This is another question that I usually ask later. But you're just you're really good at this. You're just making me very. What kind of comedy do you have? Uh, I do a lot of observational stuff. When I first started out, I thought you know I wanted to do these crazy off the wall stories, and that's kind of tough to reel some people in with. Right. So uh, now I, I got one of those minds that's constantly, you know, whatever's going on in front of me, I'm thinking about what if this happened or, you know, what if, you know, this happened. And so I like to take something, you know, where it may happen amongst my day and kind of put a spin on it. You know, really? Which, which I love doing. Do you, so, I mean, you've got a prepared set. Oh, right? yeah. Right. Multiple prepared sets at this point. Awesome. Even yeah. at eight months. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know, quick learner. <laughs> <laughs> how did you get involved? What, what, how did you get started? Um, I had a friend named Angela, I'm just going to plug it right now, I had a friend named Angela Veen and uh, she was friends with uh, Chris Dyke, who was another comedian from Muskegon, mm -hmm. and she said, well, you know, I love hanging out with you, I'm always laughing, I'm gonna, you should do stand-up comedy, and I said, well, I don't even know how to get started. Um, hooked me up with Chris Dyke, and from there it just went, you know, doing open mics in Muskegon, Started venturing to Grand Rapids um, and kind of 
did the open mic trail up to now, you know, doing some showcases here and there and, awesome. and hosting the show at Stray Cat. So mostly, though, in that in those areas, that you, Grand Rapids and Muskegon, do you ever get out to... Oh, I like I travel the whole world uh, doing comedy. When I say that, I mean like to Flint and Traverse City, <laughs> <laughs> the whole world. <laughs> well, it sounds like you're enjoying it and you're doing good though. Oh, I love doing it. Yeah. What and, makes you know, it? What, go ahead. If if I never were to, you know what I mean, be that guy in front of a three thousand person crowd, you know what I mean. Just the the fun that I have doing it is is good enough for me, you know. The laughs give you a rush. It is. And, it is. Yeah, yeah. That's what's great about comedy is even if I don't have a show where you know I have forty people sitting in front of me laughing, if I can make two people who had a crappy day forget about their day for fifteen minutes, right. you know what I mean? That's right. cool. That's, That's cool. what it's all about. Exactly. It's like this is this is this is the rush, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So that get, keeps you going. Yeah, um, in your eight months, do you have any um, any stories, anything that stands out, good or bad? Good or bad? Anything um, that really, like a lot of times, I don't know if you bombed, I don't know if you ever, uh, anything has ever happened uh, great. I mean, autographs, have you ever asked for got autographs? I've, I've never, I autographed my own poster. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my room. All right, I got, a, I got a Tim Luck. I'm not conceited. Or <laughs> <laughs> um, I never really autographed, for the first time last week, and I did a show at a place called Studio Anatomy up in Traverse City. And a friend of mine, you know, was selling CDs after the show, and a couple groups of people came out, and as I was smoking a cigarette after the show, and they said, well, we looked for your CD, we didn't see your CD. I said, I didn't, I don't have a CD. Well, make a CD. <laughs> okay, I'll make a CD. You know? So now you're on a quest. Now I'm make, on a quest. make a yes, CD. yes. So if the owner of Studio Anatomy is watching, I'm making a CD. <laughs> <laughs> did you, uh, before uh, your friend Amy? Did you? Uh, um, Angie. Angie? I was I got the A we right. We call her Amy. Okay. Uh, before she got you in with Chris and all that. So like growing up did, and, and were you a funny kid? Did you like comedy? Yes. I was the class clown. And, were you? You know, I was the kid that sat, you know, when all the other kids were watching cartoons and was sneaking in watching, you know, um, Eddie Murphy. You know right. what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. just, I grew up, I grew up and, you know, I had diabetes and I wasn't the kid who had like the fanciest shoes. And so I had to learn when other kids wanted to poke fun at me, you know, how to, to come back and be wittier. And so as opposed to getting good at science or math, I learned how to counter, you know what I mean, the, some of the crappy people in school. Right. And that just went to be in, you know, any party I was at or whatever. It was just... Do you do car, uh, crowd work at all when you do your comedy? I didn't. I didn't. Well, I wasn't very good at it. I shouldn't say I didn't try. Right. I wasn't very good at it up until um, about two months ago. And then I kind of made it my mission. Like, I would go out and do open mics and just flat out say, like, this. I'm, I'm just going to do a bunch of crowd work. And you guys are gonna have to roll with it, and you have no other choice. Who gives a shit? <laughs> you say that right up front. I'm doing crowd work. I did a couple times. Yeah, yeah. Sure, that's a, yeah. that's great. I and love hosting. That. Hosting, hosting to me has become an amazing way to do a lot of crowd work. Sure, sure, absolutely. Yeah, and because you're there, and you you open it up, and you just see who's there. And yeah, yeah. I would I'd get nervous in the beginning to do crowd work because it's one thing to do you know a planned set. Right. But to have to go off of your heels, you know what I mean, in that situation, Very hard. it really is. I've been it doing really it for is. 38 years, and uh, it's still, I'm, I'm not a crowd work comedian, so it's, it's, it's very hard for even a polished comedian to do. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, funny story, we did a show in um, Grand Haven at the Grand Haven Brew House, and we had this guy, about six comedians, I think it was, a couple weeks ago. We had this guy who was sitting off to the side, and he's talking do you know the first like 15 minutes of the show and the host is even saying i need you to shut the hell up can you shut the hell up and then my friend um uh, steven chris got up there and just totally did the best crowd work with this guy that i've ever seen really and oh yes and like had the whole house laugh oh, that's great that's great thought, damn you <laughs> he's been on the show and uh I, very I know. funny guy yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Does the Stray Cat, do they have a lot of, uh, is it a big house? Do you get big crowds? Um, you know, it really all varies. We could have crowds of five people, 
or we could have it, you know, where there's five seats left, you know what I mean, available. Right, right. So it's it's kind of the up and down. Right. I found going up and doing sets and doing stand up is so much easier than trying to orchestrate, you know, oh, yeah. a good comedy show. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, because doing uh, when you plan a show, when you have to do it, it's it's a little harder. You got to think about everything. It, you do, yeah, yeah. Whereas uh, normally you just, hey, this is what I do, and yeah, and drawing people in. I had a lot like where we do um, our stand up now. It used to be a gay nightclub, and so and then they named it Stray Cat. So good job <laughs> on not making it seem like <laughs> a gay nightclub anymore. I sometimes it does kind of sound, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes Paul, the owner, gets mad because I'll go up, you know, to host a show and I'll say, welcome to the Stray Cat, also known as the Homeless Kitten. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, yeah. But, but there's never, of, go ahead, I'm sorry. A lot of people will say, you know, like, well, isn't that a gay club? And I'm like, no, it's not a gay club anymore. It just sounds like it. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. It's it's tough, you know, to draw in the crowd there. But yeah. I'm uh, trying to make it work. But there's got to be jokes within itself. Maybe. Oh, there is. There is. Before it was is there a gay ghosts club, of gay people in the bathroom? I don't know. Before it was a gay club, it was a Red Lobster. And so when I went up to do... What a history that yeah, yeah. When I went up to do a set, I said, you know what? Uh, a while back, I wasn't imagining that one day the same place that I sat and ate lobster. And then 10 years later, danced with a man. I would be on stage. I would be on stage doing history. comedy, you know. Does it say... I mean, is there different owners? I mean, who, who does that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um... It just was kind of odd the way, you know, it, it transferred. We got a mall in Muskegon, so then they would, they moved the Red Lobster, you know, out Muskegon's the grown up, quite, quite, grown quite a bit. It is, yeah. it is. Right. You know, I mean, it's not great, but it's not horrible, no. you know. No. It's kind of that happy and not every <laughs> And not every business used to be a gay nightclub either. Or, no. Or a Red Lobster. So. No, but that would be weird if every business at one point had been a gay nightclub. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I didn't hear that. I've never heard that about the Stray Cat. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, and I had been there a few times. Like I have friends, you know what I mean. That are lesbian, gay people. You right. Know? So right. I had been there before. It was the comedy club. I was actually when someone said, you know, it's it's hey, come down, you can do stand up comedy there. I'm like, isn't that the gay club? And, right. and right. I didn't even know. Right. Right. So, but it's fun. It's so much fun doing stuff. That's good. And it seems like you you really enjoy doing comedy. I love it. Yeah. Love yeah. it. You know? And you drove for quite a ways, and I really appreciate you driving uh, today. Um, but you and you're doing all the. All the you know you're making the rounds and you're hosting and yes. you're really getting your feet wet in this comedy thing and at eight months doing it, wow! And you, uh, and news. Yeah, I was going to ask this at the end, so maybe I'll ask it twice. But do you have any goals to? I mean, what do you want to? Do? You want to? I would. I'd like to be able to travel and do comedy. You know what I mean? And right. even if it's not a full time job, you know, um, just maybe they need machinists in other cities. Hey, I could thought. right. Yeah. <laughs> I could I could gig machine for you if you know I'm, I'm in the city. I wish it worked like that. Like, hey, boss, I'm gonna be in Flint <laughs> working today. Got a show that night. I, I I do the same thing. I've got a you know full time job, and you know it, it's like if you could only do what you know your job and do the comedy thing, you'd be you'd be sad. It'd be a great twist. Yeah. But see, the company that I work for, you know, I haven't been there very long, but right. my boss seems to be pretty laid back about. If if you have to do this, you have to do that. Oh, that's cool. That always helps. Yeah. Yeah. That always helps, especially when you're a comedian and you're doing all these shows. So you're really getting your feet wet. Yeah, I I there's been times, and I'm sure every comedian's had it, where you go to do a show and have to work at seven o'clock in the morning, and you're making it back into town around three, just thinking like, <laughs> should I call in? <laughs> well, I get you know to do my shows. I get a lot of comedians from you know Muskegon. Ohio, Indiana. I mean, a lot of them come from different states and to drive, and I, I like to give them as much time as I can and do what yeah, I can. Yeah. So, but they're they're in it for the love of comedy to do it, and it sounds like you're you're doing the same thing. Oh yeah, you're right up there. Um, so, do you? Uh, I don't know if I asked you this or not. Um, do, you, do you prepare much for your like before you do your set? I do. I'm crazy about not remembering <laughs> shit. Really? So, like, I'll have to figure out what jokes I want to do in a set and then almost 
Um, not so much like as I'm driving, you know, but periodically I'll even be in my car and at a stoplight and like quiz myself. Okay, all right, so I gotta do the catfish joke and then I gotta do, you know, oh, okay. I, it's remembering what ones, you know, and, and what goes where. Exactly, what goes where. And yeah. so doing it eight months now, I know this happens to every comedian I've ever known. Have you ever been up there on stage, of course, and. I have. Wait, yes, wait. yes. Tell us about that. <laughs> I want to hear. This is the fun part where we get to hear how how cuz it's not it's not fun, is it? It's not easy it's to do. It's horrible. People don't know this. It's it's almost as if time changes. <laughs> people it's say true. people say time is relevant. No, it's not. No. Somehow it can alter from being a minute <laughs> into a week and a half. Yeah, exactly. And uh, one time I did, I was really confident, like, I looked it over enough, you know, where I could get up there and do my set without my cheat sheet. And so I'm out of town, I have no cheat sheet to go off of, and I get up there and I start doing jokes, and all of a sudden I just freeze because I can't remember, am I going into the jokes about my kids, or am I going into the jokes, you know what I mean, about my work, and I just decided, uh, I'm just going to do stuff that I, whatever pops into my head. Well, the one that popped into my head was the worst joke that I have as far as like being dirty and, oh, wow. and obscene and stuff. Right. And someone goes, hey, I really love that joke. <laughs> I didn't tell anyone, but I'm like, wow, I went from freezing, you know what I mean, right. to becoming the coolest dirty comic of the night. You know? so that was kind of nice. I tell you, I get a personal story. 1984, something like that, I was working a club and <clears throat> I forgot, and this is, you know, I, I, you know, come from the, uh, well, anyway, I, I forgot, I froze, as it happens a lot. So, it's exactly the same thing, Tim, exactly as you. I thought of the only joke I could think of, I don't know why, it, and I, I'll tell you, after the show, the joke is, <laughs> but this is the most, it was very disgusting, dirty joke, but it's all I could think of, and I told it, but unlike you, Mind bound. I mean, it, it was like people were like, and they weren't, a, they weren't a, like a, a real, you know, a Christian crowd or anything. But, uh, but uh, they were, you know, and I, I so uh, it got me back on track, yeah. which was a good thing. But um, yeah, so I learned not to drink heavily before the show. <laughs> <laughs> Is it my joke? You know, I can't say it obviously here, right? Because uh, right. What's it got to do with? Um, a Charlie Sheen style <laughs> uh, Christmas present give out. That's all I can say. Yeah, mine's got something to do with similar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not fun. People think it's easy. Wow, the time really flies, Tim. You are a good guest, a good talker. Thank um, you. What can we say in the last few minutes that we've got? You, so, Tim Locke on Facebook. Do you have Twitter? Do you have a comedy page? I have Facebook. Everyone keeps saying you need to get on Twitter, and I'm like, that's, I have a hard enough time keeping up on Facebook. Yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm older than I look. <laughs> <laughs> you do any These um... fancy computers? <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a kid, but he talks like an eighty-year-old. Yeah, or, or uh, actually fifty-year-old. Oh, as soon as we wrap this up, I'm going to eat some more of those originals and take a nap while my friend drives me home. <laughs> He, he really is 35. Uh, um, where was I going? Um, so, do you, do you ever throw any of that? Like I'm going backwards now, but do you ever throw any of that stuff in your uh, your set about your, your the fact that you look so young? Uh, I have a time or two. I actually I did um, uh, I hosted one night and asked people like, "How old do you think I am?" and Somebody said 23, and I'm like, this is my new best friend. <laughs> <laughs> and you have kids, too? I have kids, yes. Wow. I have a 12-year-old, and I have an 8-year-old, and they are hilarious. It sounds like you talk about them during their set. I do, I do. I try not to a lot, you know, but it's just, that's part of my life. People like to hear that. There's stuff that I see, you know what I mean, having kids. Like, my son, um, he was eating his baked beans with a corn dog stick, and I'm like, what are you doing? And he right. goes... I'm too lazy to get up and get a spoon. <laughs> I love that story. And I'm like, as a father, I want you to do well in life. And right now, you're really just, I'm on the brink of not knowing. <laughs> He's going to be our next president <laughs> right there. <laughs> and he says, well, if you want me to do good in life, why don't you go grab me a spoon? And I say, well, how would that make you good in life? And he goes, because it'd show that I'm a good supervisor. <laughs> Oh my god. And so I want to have high hopes for him, so I went and grabbed a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great joke. You should put that in your set. That's amazing. <laughs> Tim, it's been, it's been great having you. I got just so much stuff I didn't even get to. Because um, you're, you're very funny. you got to come to do one of my definitely, shows. The, definitely. Fun, the funny spot, Mark Bondo. I'd love to have you. You are uh, very funny. And 
I, I just, I'd like to have you. Hey, and like awesome, I said, there's man. a lot I didn't, I didn't get to, but... Hey. It was nice keep, seeing you. Keep plugging along. Thank Tim you. Locke, everyone. Thank Tim you. Locke. Huh? With an E at the end, right? With, with an, an e. e. With an E. With an E. That's right. You don't lock the door. It's Tim Locke. Oh, yeah. Not Locke. <laughs> Locke. I get that a lot. At Tim the Stray Locke. Cat in Muskegon. You can see him there, and you can see him really anywhere. So just uh, uh, go on his Facebook page, and I'm sure he's got it posted, and he's got his kid eating beans with the corn dog. I do. I do. Yes. <laughs> Photo evidence. I'm going to his Facebook. Hey, folks, that's all the time we got for today. Um, this has been Martin Bonto for Comedy on Tap. Uh, everybody have a funny night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thanks again.